Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. McFarland and if you've known me for years, then I love everything. Guitars, amps, pedals, recording gear, all the stuff. And when I was contacted by Quilter Labs to demo their new direct amp, I was like, yeah, that makes total sense because I've actually owned all kinds of Quilter Lab amps over the years. Everything from the Pro Block to their combo amps, to their small heads, to just tons and tons of stuff. So when I saw that they were coming out with another product, I was like, yeah, I'm pretty confident in Quilter that they can provide a great product that's gonna supply the needs of recording musicians and also guys that play out live. And what we have here in front of me is the Direct Amp. And as fate would have it, I was really kind of busy during the release of the Direct Amp. So I've kind of waited a little bit for my official review, even though I'm sure they wanted me to do this video a long time ago, but it's fine. But what we do have on the market now is the Nano Cortex, which is really a stark opposite product of what the Direct Amp really is. So let's dive into the Direct Amp, let's listen to some more sounds, and let's talk about some other products on the market that may be a better fit, but maybe the direct amp is the perfect fit for you and your needs. So what we have here on the direct amp is a guitar input, an effects send and return. So that means you have an effects loop. You can add in modulation, delay, reverbs, just like you would on a real guitar amp. So you have all your drive pedals going into the front end of the amp, which is IE the input. And then you have your modulation, delay and reverb into the effects loop of the amp. And that kind of keeps things nice and separate and keeps the signal path nice and clean so your delays and reverbs sound very nice in the power amp section and not going into the front end of an overdriven amplifier. And then we do have a headphone out, which is great for practice. And we also have a wireless input, which actually means a Bluetooth connection. So you can carry this around in your backpack, in your luggage, whatever carry case that you have, and if you're in a spot where you just need to practice real fast, you can whip out a guitar, take out the direct amp, plug in your headphones, and then bring up a backing track via the Bluetooth input. And now you can jam silently with your headphones on, maybe out in the lobby of a venue or the backstage of a venue, or maybe in your hotel room, or maybe just in your living room while your kids are playing around and your wife is cooking dinner. So whatever situation that you find yourself in, the direct amp can provide all your needs. Now on the main controls, we do have a boost, a limiter, a reverb, and an effects loop on and off. So there's four different switches here that you can really utilize to turn things on and off at different times, depending on your needs once again. And so if you had some delay and reverb in the effects loop and you want to turn that off momentarily, you could just hit the switch and now all your delay and reverb is gone. But have no fear, you actually have a built-in reverb already on the unit. So just think of like your classic Princeton reverbs, your deluxes, your twins. We have a very, very nice reverb here on the direct amp, and this is what that sounds like. So this is with the reverb totally off. And this is with the reverb on. Now we could just turn it down. So we can't really change the length of the reverb, we just change the amount of wetness that we have. And it is a very nice sound of reverb. So 
So whether you have another reverb pedal in the effects loop, maybe that could be your main always on reverb, but then you kick in the built-in reverb for your more wet, very washed out kind of sound. Just whatever you want. So you can either have it turned down and have that be your main one always on, then have another pedal be your more ambient option or vice versa. So lots of flexibility here on the direct amp. Now the next one is a limiter. And this has been a feature on other heads and amps from Quilter. So it's a limiter that reduces the amount of gain on the input. So even though you have a lot of gain on tap, maybe you've cranked up the drive knob or the gain knob on the clean channel. Once you kick in the limiter, it will reduce that gain, but also add some sustain and limiting, i.e. limiter, to your guitar sound to give you a sense of compression. Let's go ahead and crank it up to 12 o'clock, and this is the sound that we have. Now we'll kick it in. So you can hear that the transients have been reduced, and we have a lot more compression than we had before. This is with the limiter all the way up. And then turn it off. So maybe for me, so we're in that nine o'clock to 10 o'clock area would be a good start. Especially for all you chicken picking guys that want to do some country tunes and you just need a little bit of compression, but you don't want to add another compression pedal onto your board. So this is a good option for you guys. So after the limiter, we actually have a clean channel and a boost channel. And the boost can actually be thought of as a second channel of an amplifier. And you can really crank the gain on the boost. And then there's actually a separate volume knob for that boost which is amazing because sometimes a boost knob by itself, just adding gain, it's just way too loud compared to the clean channel. And you want a little bit more control over that boost or gain sound. So I love that they included the output knob there. So what we can really do with this is for the Q boost, we have a fat, a bright, and a flat. For the amp type, we actually have three different kinds here. We have a Fender, an AC-15, and a JMP, which is your Marshall. And then for the speaker type, we have a CL-80, a V-30, and a Jensen. And then for our cab type, we have a closed, an open, and an off, just in case you want to use another IR loader or any other box in the effects loop that will provide your impulse response or speaker option. So let's actually go through some clean sounds of the amp types here. So this is on the Fender option right now and I have it on the Jensen speaker and you'll notice that when I switch from the closed back to the open back we're going to get a slightly different amount of bass response depending on what setting that I choose. So we're going to keep it on open right now in the middle position and this is going to be on the Fender and on the Jensen. Okay, We're already in the very hairy edge of breakup kind of territory. So let's go ahead and turn that down. Maybe turn up the master volume just a little bit. Okay, let's go to the AC-15 and the Vintage 30. Okay, definitely a lot more mid-range on that one. And then we have the JMP and the CL-80. Okay, so you can hear and see that even though the volume knob or the gain knob of that clean channel is about nine o'clock, depending on the amp type, we're getting more and more gain going from the Fender that has the least amount of gain to the JMP, which has the most amount of gain. Now that doesn't mean that you can't get a nice clean sound from the JMP. You just have to turn down the gain even more and then maybe play more on your neck pickup. <laughs> Okay, 
Let's actually go to the close back option here. So here's the open once again. Okay, just a little bit of that low end comes roaring in there on the bottom, which is very nice. Okay, let's start switching up some of the speaker options here. So let's go to a Vintage 30 on the JMP. Back to the CL80. And then to the Jensen. Now to me, the Jensen definitely has that 10 inch kind of speaker size feel to it. So when you go to a Vintage 30, it's naturally going to scoop some of the mids. Then the CL80 is going to have that more full bodied kind of sound. Okay, let's go back to the AC15 here. That sounds nice with the Vintage 30. Very nice clean tones for that one. Now let's go ahead and look at the boost. And regardless of where you have this gain knob on the clean channel, you can get any amount of boost and volume that you want from the boost channel. And it's really independent of the gain of the clean channels. So if we kick it in, you can see that the LED goes from green over to red. And that lets you know that whatever gain setting you had on the clean channel, it's now totally bypassed and now these knobs control only the boost channel or which I like to call the second channel of the amplifier. So let's go ahead and start off with maybe at nine o'clock. Let's, let's turn the volume at 12 o'clock. Let's go to the bridge position. Okay, that is on the fat option. Let's go to the bright option. Okay, and here's the flat option. All right, now let's go ahead and boost the gain and bring back down the volume. Let's go with the CL80 on this one. I think I like the Venice 30 the best so far. So with all that said, let's talk about who should buy the Quilter Direct Amp. Now, in lieu of the Nano Cortex that just came out from Neural DSP, I think the Neural DSP is a little bit more in budget than the Direct Amp. I'm pretty sure this is going for $3.99 at Sweetwater or any other online distributor. And, and if you don't want to mess with phone apps and, you know, presets and all the different stuff. If you just want a very simple, no bones about it product that you can put on a pedal board that you can still do the four cable method with, 
then I would honestly consider the direct amp because you can get a nice clean tone from this. Then just push it with pedals and still add in your delays and reverbs in the effects loop. And you can get a really nice sound and not have to mess with all the other gadgets and fidgety stuff that comes with some of the more digital options. As far as I know, the only digital thing on the direct amp is the reverb, but everything else is pure analog. And yes, you're not getting tubes, but Quilter does a really nice job at getting a nice warm sound while still being solid state. And what is really nice is it is powered by a 9 volt, 250 milliamp power supply. And more than likely on your pedal board, you already have a brick of some sort that has isolated outputs that you're powering other pedals with anyway. So adding the direct amp onto your pedal board should be very easy and a smooth transition. Uh, I would probably put this on the top left corner of your pedal board. And that way you can kind of arrange your other pedals accordingly. And also that way the XLR outputs on the top are not covering up or hindering any other pedals that you might want to step on to turn things on and off. So yes, there are other options on the market. There's a HX Stomp that's fully digital. There's all the UA pedals that have, you know, basically amps in a box kind of deals. And those are all perfectly valid options, but the direct amp does have a nice feature set, including the Bluetooth, including the stereo XLR outputs, the effects loops, the headphones, and just a very simple control, just set it and forget it. If you're a Fender kind of guy, and you just want to replace your Fender Twin, Deluxe, or Princeton on stage, then this will definitely get you 90% there. Yes, it's not a tube amp, but, but it'll do the job once you add in all your other pedals. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you so much for Quilter Labs for supplying the direct amp for this review. And I must say, those t-shirts that they provide are very soft, very comfortable. Uh, this is probably the best t-shirt I have in my collection right now. Uh, and yes, I have quite a few. So, um, I don't know what material this is, but Quilter Labs, you uh, really knocked it out of the park with the t-shirt. So, I've been a fan of Quilter Labs for many, many years, like I've said before. Own tons of amp products over the years, and... Quilter Labs is a company that you can trust and their customer service is second to none and they just provide really great tools that you can use in the studio or on stage. So thanks guys for watching. I am Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.